Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're gonna to talk about ASRock's new AMD Ryzen AM5 socket server line. In this video, we're gonna specifically talk about the 1U4LW-B650-2L2T redundant power supply. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's for a little bit more about ASRock's new One U AM5 Ryzen solutions. In this video, we are gonna specifically talk about uh, the redundant power supply. And in, another, in the next video, we're gonna talk about the single cabled in power supply, which is the big difference between these two servers. So let's go ahead and hop in and start with the CPUs. All right, so there's one CPU inside. It takes AMD Ryzen AM5 socket, which means it is the AMD 7000 series processor inside and this is one of my favorite personal series out there right now uh, the performance that you get is going to blow the comparable intel out of the water so the e2300 or the e2400 series uh, doesn't really <laughs> match up at all when it comes to the ryzen but that is the comparable uh, series for intel and the ryzen's are just so so powerful overall that it, it's one of my favorite uh, servers to offer out to customers and and people use it all over from uh, using it as a dedicated server uh, using it uh, for streaming for gaming. Uh, there's a lot of really great uses that you can use this for because it is so, so powerful. Uh, some of the most popular procs in this series are the 7950X and the 7950X 3D. Uh, these are the ones that, that seem to come up the most uh, from our customers uh, that, that are using these as a whole. So that's what we stock. So if you're going to our uh, website, to, uh, you can custom build one of these. Um, and those are the procs that we carry in stock most often so that we can ship out right away. All right, as far as the RAM inside, there are four DIMM slots. It is DDR5 memory. The types of RAM you can use are ECC unbuffered and non-ECC unbuffered. You can use a number of different sizes. You can use an 8 gig module, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, or all the way up to a 48 gig. We're going to come back to that because that's one of the real big winners for ASRock right now. And you can use speeds of 4800, 5200, or 5600 with ECC unbuffered. Uh, the max that they currently have specced in uh, with the 48 gigabytes is 4800 speed. Um, and with non-ECC, you can get 5,600. And we encourage you to go look at ASRock spec sheet. You'll see on there uh, all the different uh, modules that are spec'd in as far as the different speeds, different sizes, and different types uh, on our website as well. Uh, when you use our drop-down configurator, you'll be able to see uh, the different uh, options. And generally, we're gonna be putting in uh, 32 and 48. Uh, and again, the 48 is the real big winner because if you compare the ASRock AM5 to the Super Micro AM5, which is who their big competitor is right now, the Super Micro AM5 has not specced in 48 gigabytes. The BIOS doesn't technically support it. I have a feeling down the line they will, but as of right now, they don't. So ASRock can get all the way up to 192 gigabytes using 448 gigabytes at 4800 speed, whereas the Super Micros can only get to 128 gigabytes using 432 gigabytes. And that is uh, one of the problems that a lot of people are having with Super Micro right now is they want to be able to support 192 and ASRock is the winner for that reason for RAM. All right, let's talk storage. So there are four hot swap 3.5 inch drive bays in the front, and there's one M.2 uh, in the uh, the middle here. There, there's a, a carved out section you can actually put your M.2 into and you don't need any extra uh, added pieces or boss cards or anything like that. It's already built in uh, from ASRock directly like this. But let's start with the uh, the large form factor drives in the front. So again, there's four of them. Uh, it is a 3.5 inch drive, which is an advantage in the sense of with the 2.5 inch drives, uh, outside of using solid state drives, the 2.5 inch hard drives are just very, very uh, low capacity overall. Uh, the other note is the M.2 in the back. Uh, the M.2 is NVMe. You can get up to four terabytes at 16 uh, gigabytes per second, uh, which is always one of the big advantages of NVMe as a whole. Uh, and that's perfect for using as a, a boot drive for your operating system. So all right, now that we know a little bit more about the uh, the storage, and we know a little bit more about the RAM and the CPU, let's go ahead and hop in and show you the guts and show you the inside. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear, be right back. All right, have my ESD gear. All we're gonna need is a Phillips head screwdriver. What we got is going to be the PH2. We're gonna go ahead and just unscrew the screw in the back here and then we're just going to push our two buttons down and lift the top up and we are in so we're going to remove our air baffle here so that you can 
see the CPU and the four DIMM slots. So we're just gonna do a quick overview as a whole. So you have uh, your CPU here, this is gonna be your AM5 socket. Uh, it's got a nice big heat sink on it because they do run very, very hot. There's some extra spaces also uh, for the fans. It comes with five to start, but we do recommend if it overheats to go ahead and put in a couple extra fans depending on what you are specifically doing. Uh, as far as the DIMMs, there's four DIMMs. This will be the first slot right here, the blue slot. If you were putting in two, you'd put them in the two blues so that way you have an even balance across both your memory channels. Uh, you wouldn't wanna put them in the first two slots Lots over here because you would just be overworking one channel. Um, so you want to put them in blue. This will be the first one. This will be the second one, third one, fourth one. And realistically, most people are running these with four uh, DIMMs inside and trying to get up to 128 or 192 gigabytes. But if you were, say, just doing uh, a lower end application and only needed two 16 gig DIMMs, you'd put them in the two DIMMs, uh, two blue DIMM slots. So just wanted to recommend that to you. And there is on the PCIe side, you will notice that there's one full height which is a PCIe 4.0 uh, by 16. So that's gonna be a fourth gen uh, full height profile with 16 lanes. Uh, and that is important because you only have that one PCIe slot, which is pretty standard uh, for these Ryzen's as a whole, uh, that you only have one PCIe slot. So you need to make sure that you're using that for the right thing. If that's a RAID controller or a GPU, an added network card, uh, depends on what you wanna use it for, but just know going into it, you only have one, so choose wisely. One other important thing to note is the network setup here. And this is one of the things that a lot of people like for the ASRocks compared to the Super Micros is there is built into the board two 10 gigabit and two one gigabit uh, RJ45, uh, which is another way of saying ethernet. Uh, that is a nice, nice feature that ASRock has set up in here. Uh, so that way you do have a 10 gigabit without having to add an extra card. So the nice thing is this has two redundant power supplies. Uh, the other model that we're gonna show you in our next video uh, only has a single cabled power supply. Uh, that is the big, big advantage of this one. It will cost a little bit more, uh, but you got two power supplies and that gives you some protection in case one fails. So one important note about the power supplies is these are two 450 watt power supplies, whereas the one singled is 400. Well, hey, if you made it this far, click that like and smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built ASRock, Dell, HPE, Super Micro, IBM, Cisco, Tyann, Gigabyte, we do new and we do use. We'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Thanks for stopping by guys, take care.